Welcome to this edition of Marvell's Follow the Wire video series. In this video, we're going to explain one of the basic building blocks for the data center, large or small. That is storage networking. We'll start by explaining the makeup of a storage network today and then discuss where the associated technologies are headed in the future. So what is storage networking? Well, it's a set of infrastructure components that enable data center architects to connect multiple servers to a shared storage system or a disk array. Now, these components include storage-specific I.O. adapters or host bus adapters, cables, transceivers, switches, and or directors. Now, these components are designed to be deployed to support storage traffic running over either an Ethernet or a fiber channel network. And because data availability is a key requirement for shared storage solutions, storage networking fabrics are always, or at least they should be, deployed in redundant, high availability configurations. Here's a look at different storage networking topologies that are commonplace from the SMB to the enterprise customer to connect application servers to shared storage resources. We'll explain these topologies from left to right in this image. Now, some customers use software-defined storage implementations that support file, block, and object storage, and these communicate over an Ethernet network. In this case, storage software runs on a server cluster, allowing each of the servers to access storage across the cluster. Now, in the second configuration, other customers use hyperconverged infrastructure, or HCI systems. In HCI, the compute, storage, and networking elements are all integrated together. Storage is accessible to all the compute elements across the HCI network. When more resources are required, just add another HCI system to the network. Now, for customers who don't need lots of compute, but they need lots of data storage, direct attached, just a bunch of flash type solutions uh, can be used, or JBOF. Like HCI and SDS, these connect typically over an Ethernet network, but can be SAS or serial attached SCSI or fiber channel connections as well. Now for mission critical applications on the right, where access to data is paramount, a storage area network or SAN is typically deployed to allow multiple servers to access multiple shared storage arrays in a secure storage only network. Now for SANs, Either Ethernet or fiber channel can be used as the transport, with most SANs being fiber channel due to the higher reliability, security, and predictable performance of this protocol. Let's take a deeper dive into the SAN topology and the protocol options. The concept of a SAN isn't new. SANs became popular in the early 2000s when client-server computing was being used. The SAN topology provided access to shared storage among two or more servers in a very highly available configuration. This replaced the need for captive storage in each server, where pre-configured storage capacities may have not been fully utilized, and it provided a much more flexible and scalable approach. SANs are deployed in highly available configurations with a minimum of two paths to each point. That way, if a failure were to occur in one component, data can still be accessed via the other path. SANs are secure in that they're de if deployed correctly. They're a dedicated storage-only network that's air-gapped from the corporate network and internet access. This is always the case when deploying using fiber channel protocol, and it's a best practice when using Ethernet, although some architects use shortcuts like VLANs in Ethernet environments. Now, SANs enable delivering high bandwidth, up to 64 gigabits per second for fiber channel today, and up to 100 gigabits per second for Ethernet, along with providing a low latency super highway for storage traffic. When it comes to using a SAN for connecting servers to shared storage, there are two main choices for connectivity, Ethernet and Fiber Channel. Yes, there are other options like uh, Serial Attached SCSI or SAS and or InfiniBand, but these are more of niche approaches uh, compared to the volume of Ethernet and Fiber Channel in use today to connect shared storage arrays to servers in the modern data center. With Ethernet, SCSI commands are embedded in the TCP IP packets 
and this is referred to as iSCSI. With Fiber Channel, SCSI storage commands are embedded in the Fiber Channel frames that are transmitted across the network. This is referred to as FCP, or Fiber Channel Protocol. Now, with next generation storage, the storage commands will be using different language. They'll be using NVMe instead of SCSI. And this is to improve the efficiency and performance of the storage communications. It's referred to as NVMe over fabrics. And transmission of the NVMe commands using Ethernet is referred to as NVMe over TCP. And transition of the NVMe over fiber channel is referred to as FC NVMe. NVMe was originally designed to communicate from the CPU and memory across the PCIe bus to solid state SSD drives, otherwise called flash or NAND storage inside the server. But the PCIe bus does not scale across distance. NVMe storage is being embraced by all the major storage vendors now as it's specifically designed as a streamlined protocol to deliver low latency access for flash storage. In today's modern flash arrays, NVMe drives are becoming the standard to connect these arrays to servers, replacing older SAS, SATA, and SCSI drives in those arrays. Now customers want to be able to obtain the performance advantage of these, this NVMe storage, but they want to be able to share the high-performance SSD storage across servers. This can be achieved by transferring or encapsulating the NVMe protocol across the fabrics. The typical choices again here are either Ethernet or fiber channel in these uh, NVMe fabrics. So given that there's a choice of transports, Ethernet or fiber channel, what are the differences and how do you help your stakeholders or customers decide the best approach? Let's compare the transport options. The internet runs on ethernet. It's ubiquitous in the data center for file and object data and it's very well known as a technology in the IT departments. They're used to deploying, managing and monitoring ethernet networks. Ethernet's available now in very high bandwidths from 100 gigabit ethernet to 800 gigabit ethernet. The reality is, however, most Ethernet attached storage arrays today support 10 or 25 gigabit Ethernet, and even the newest devices only support 100 gig Ethernet. It'll be a long time before we see storage devices supporting higher Ethernet bandwidths. Now with Ethernet, latency and CPU efficiency can be improved using remote direct memory access or RDMA offloads. However, because Ethernet is IP-based, there's always security concerns. Also, to take advantage of RDMA, many customers are going to have to rip and replace their existing Ethernet infrastructure to implement it. This is also a concern as you transition speeds where you need to change the I.O. adapters, cabling, and switches when you're transitioning from, say, 10 gigabit Ethernet to 25 or, or 100 gigabit Ethernet or above. And while Ethernet is everywhere, for high-performance Ethernet, like 100 gigabit Ethernet, the switching hardware isn't as flexible as, say, uh, lower uh, capacities or lower performance switches. 100 gig Ethernet switches start with 24 active ports, which makes deployment in smaller environments very costly. You're paying for 24 ports, but you may only use six or eight of them. Now, Fiber Channel, on the other hand, has millions of ports deployed designed for only one job, connecting servers and shared storage. It's much more conducive to storage networking. It's highly scalable with switch ports uh, that can be deployed from you know, just a couple to hundreds in the same network, and all components are backwards compatible two generations, making Fiber Channel future-proof as an approach. Fiber Channel is also secure in that it's air-gapped from the Ethernet network and has a proven track record of security and reliability. Fiber Channel is also very easy to deploy with automated device discovery, drag and drop zoning, and automatic congestion handling that's built in infra infrastructure components. You don't need any server resources to manage your fiber channel SAN. One of the drawbacks of fiber channel is the perception that it's higher cost than ethernet. While this was true when the ethernet speeds were 10 gig per second and below, uh, as ethernet speeds increase, so do the cost of the NICs, the cables, and especially the transceivers and switches. Fiber channel switches are pay as you grow. They come in 8 to 12 port increments that you license as you need them, making them much more affordable than the 100 gigabit Ethernet type uh, switches. Another thing to be aware of is that Fiber Channel 
only supports block storage. So if file or object storage is required, then you have no choice other than Ethernet for your storage network. Here's a look at how to consider making a choice of protocols based on the customer use cases and applications. Use cases like healthcare, banking and finance, ERP or CRM systems, or transportation applications are all mission critical applications that are best suited for the high reliability and security of fiber channel. And general purpose applications and solutions like office productivity, virtual desktop, or HCI are the kind of use cases for Ethernet because they typically use a combination of block file and object storage. For specialized use cases like artificial intelligence, machine learning, and high-performance computing, using InfiniBand uh, or Ethernet me over Rocky or other uh, low latency protocols may be the best choice. Now, for those customers working in those mission critical environments that are best suited for fiber channel, the best choice for host connectivity are the QLogic fiber channel HBAs from Marvell. Here's the portfolio of our QLogic fiber channel HBAs our 16 gigabit QLE 2690 series, our 32 gigabit. Uh, QLE 2740 and 2770 series, and our 64 gigabit QLE 2870 series. And these offer a variety of features listed at the bottom here that we're going to go over in uh, later sessions of our follow the wire videos. There are several unique features like port isolation, store fusion, and virtual lane technology that really do deliver more predictable and reliable storage performance. And also, these features are also supported with both a brocade and Cisco fiber channel sand uh, fabrics. Well, that's it for this Follow the Wire video. For more information on Marvell fiber channel technology, go to www.marvell.com slash QLogic. Or you can access information about Marvell technology with our OEM partners using the OEM specific microsites shown here. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you learned at least one new thing from it today. I want to thank you for your time and your attention, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.